Dear all, in this video, I'll be discussing about the basics of sensors and its classification. Let us move on to the definition of sensors first. So, sensors can be defined as an input device which provides an output signal with respect to the specific physical quantity. Let me explain this. And with respect to physical changes, you will be getting the measurable output. Okay, it is an input device and of course we can say that sensor is an input device. Okay, so with respect to physical changes, you are going to get a measurable quantity. For example, thermometer I am going to use. With respect to change in temperature, what is going to happen? The thermometer that gives a suitable reading. For example, barometer, it measures the pressure, atmospheric pressure. Okay, with respect to uh, the changes in the atmospheric pressure, you will be getting the reading. Anyway, the sensor helps for the measurement. For example, voltage sensors. For example, current sensor. These are all the examples of different types of sensors. Why voltage sensor is required? Suppose I need to measure 11 kV. By using normal type of voltmeter, it is not possible to measure. So what I am going to do? I will be taking the sample of voltage. Okay, so with the help of voltage sensor, I can able to measure uh, the volt high voltage which will be converted into measurable quantity. So this is the definition for a sensor. You can see the block diagram also. As you can see, there are different varieties of sensor. For example, we can see LDR. What do you mean by LDR? See, LDR is available here. LDR is known as light dependent resistor, LDR. How LDR operate? With respect to intensity of light. Um, okay, so if the light, if the presence of light, the resistance will be changing. That is why it is known as light dependent resistor. Similarly, you can able to see the soil moisture sensor. Okay, with respect to changes in soil moisture, you will be getting the electrical quantity. Either it may be voltage or current. And the humidity sensor is available here. Okay. With respect to humidity, changes in humidity, you will be able to under, you will be able to get the particular reading. We have IR sensor. Okay, uh, there are two type of IR sensor: transmissive type as well as reflective type. Then PIR sensor. Okay, rain sensor. Many varieties of sensors are available. Okay, so in this course, we are going to familiar different type of sensors also. Okay, now I would like to discuss about the importance of sensors in different areas. The main importance of sensor that is concentrating at the automatic aircraft system. It is a closed loop control system. For example, consider a flight or an aeroplane. Position, height, speed, temperature and location has to be measured. In order to measure position, height, speed, temperature, location, humidity, all those things. We need sensors. Different varieties of sensors are required. Then the output of sensors that will be directly feeding to microcontrollers. Or, or example, you can say a computer. Okay. In a microcontroller, what exactly does? It will be comparing with the reference quantity with respect to actual quantity. Actual quantity will be available with the help of sensors. So comparing reference quantity with respect to actual quantity, it is going to provide desirable output. That desirable output will be feeding to engine, flaps, motors, wings, etc so that it maintains stability and the proper working will be taken place especially for uh, aircraft system. So presence of sensors in aircraft control system is highly unavoidable. Let us concentrate some other application. Consider the data science. We can able to observe data acquisition device. Okay. The input of data acquisition device will be sensors. So you'll be receiving the input with the help of sensors. So in order to operate data acquisition device, presence of sensor is highly unavoidable. It is too essential. And this is your final output. So all are connected. Okay, sensor, output of sensor will be connected to signal conditioning devices. Then there will be an ADC and output will be directly connected to your uh, particular computer. Clear? So data acquisition device means it comprises of signal conditioning device, ADC, etc. So in order to give the input to the data acquisition device, we must require sensor. So presence of sensor is highly essential in case of 
a data acquisition system. What sensor exactly does? It measures the changes in the physical quantity or changes in the environment. Temperature, pressure, etc. can be measured with the help of sensor. For example, you can see microphone, then thermometer. These are the popular examples of sensors. Let us understand what are the different types of sensors which are available. For example, thermocouples, then resistive temperature detector, you can call RTD, then thermistors, thermocouple that is going to operate with the help of Seebach effect. There will be hot junction as well as cold junction, difference between hot and cold junction that produce voltage. Then thermistors, okay, thermistor is actually uh, based on uh, the positive and negative temperature coefficient of resistance. Thermistors can be used in case of air conditioning system. These sensors will be helpful for measuring the temperature. If I talk about the strain gauges, uh, it can measure strain, then pressure, tension, weight, etc. In order to measure weight and load, you can go for load cells. If I talk about linear variable differential transformer, that is called LVDT, it is mainly used for measurement of displacement or distance. If I mention about automobile, so accelerometer is uh, highly unavoidable. And the microphone is one of the best example of a sensor. It captures sound waves with a different frequency. And the current transducer, that can be measured either AC or DC current. So these are the different type of uh, sensors. Uh, let me have a brief overview about other type of sensors. Let me continue. Voltage transformer, it measures the voltage. Then optical sensor, what it does? It detects presence of light. Then it transmits the data and replace the uh, con uh, conventional sensors. It is mainly used for the OFC communication, optical fiber cable, you must have familiar. It obeys based on the total internal reflection. Regarding the camera, without sensors, we cannot operate with the digital cameras. It is used to capture the signal and the continuous 2D images. It is mainly used for the image processing. Then digital sensors, that is used for discrete on, off counting, then linear and rotary encoding, position control or position measurement, etc. can be done with the help of digital sensors. Regarding GPS, there are a lot of applications used to capture the longitudinal, then uh, lati uh, latitudinal position based on the GPS, then other satellite positioning system, especially for satellite positioning system. Okay, different GPS sensors with the different, ac uh, different uh, accuracy ranges are available nowadays. Okay, so we have familiar different type of sensors and yeah, its importance, okay. In this session, I have mainly explained what do we mean by sensor and what are the different type of sensors. And one more point is remaining. How do you classify sensors? The first classification, you can divide the sensors into, I have listed out so many sensors, different type of sensors. You can classify the different type of sensors according to different parameters. Number one, active and passive sensors. Let me know what do you mean by active sensors. Uh, in, ca in case of active sensors, which require external power or any external excitation that is required. If I speak about passive, sen uh, passive sensors, it doesn't require any external power signal or any kind of ex excitation. So this is actually one type of classification, active as well as passive sensors. Depends on the external supply or external powering unit. The second classification is by means of detection used in the sensor. For example, it may be electric detection or biological detection, chemical detection or radioactive detection. Based on that, you can divide electric sensor, biological sensor, chemical sensor, radioactive sensor, etc. The third classification is based on the conversion phenomenon. If I speak about thermoelectric meters, thermoelectric sensor. The input will be temperature and output will be electrical quantity. Electrochemical signal. Input will be chemical changes and output will be electrical quantity. So chemical changes will be measured in terms of electrical quantity. Electromagnetic, for example, antenna, you must have seen antenna. Electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves that is actually dealing with the antenna. Then output will be electrical quantity. Thermo-optic, okay, input may be temperature and output will be in terms of light. 
the fourth classification is analog and digital sensors based on the output what kind of output you are getting from the sensor will it be analog or will it be digital according to that you can divide the sensor for example uh, analog sensor that provides the continuous output where digital signal uh, it will, what i can say it will be like uh, zero one zero one so on so in this session we have discussed about what do you mean by sensor a simple block diagram of sensor list out different type of sensors we made a brief list and we have understood the basic type of sensors which are available in the market and we understood the importance of sensor where it can be employed and two major area we have explained and finally the classification how do you classify there are different criteria we familiar almost five criteria according to five criteria we have divided the sensor accordingly in the coming uh, video i'll be discussing about transducer what do you mean by transducer importance of transducer how do you classify transducers okay and we are going to familiar various varieties of transducers as well as sensors finally thank you very much for watching this video if you are having any queries please do put up in the comment box